day 17 on site. Quick recap of where I am. I'm in Springs, South Africa, at a radio transmission site owned by signal distribution company Santec, formerly owned by the SABC. This is going to be the new home of LM Radio's brand new 702 kHz AM Gauteng transmitter. The planning of the LM Radio Gauteng project started many years ago and is the brainchild of Chris Turner. Phase 1 involved the dismantling of the existing 98 meter broadcast tower. An avid follower of LM Radio, Sean Ross, posed this question on Facebook. He said, Hi Gavin, what is the reason for painstakingly dismantling the old tower piece by piece? Why not just blow it up like in this video? Well, one would think that dismantling this tower would be a walk in the park and just take a few days. But due to the fact that Centec might want to reuse this tower at an alternative location, Communications Technology Broadcasting has had to painstakingly dismantle the tower in several sections. Until day 15, the gin pole method was used to lower each section of the tower. The progress is a little bit slower than we anticipated, mainly due to the sheer weight of the mass sections itself. As the tower became shorter and shorter, so the lower sections became wider and heavier, and a crane was required to dismantle the bottom sections. The crane that was originally booked for this job had a 4-ton lifting capacity, but due to the adverse weather conditions Gauteng was experiencing at the time, precautions had to be taken for health and safety reasons, and an 8-ton crane was ordered. Johnson Crane Hire's closest branch is based in Germiston, but unfortunately that branch didn't have any 8-ton cranes available at the time and so one had to come all the way from Middleburg. When Bux van den Berg from CTB told me that it was coming from Middleburg, I expected it to arrive much later than the scheduled 8am. Next thing Bux shouts, it's here! Saxmoor Fencing was contracted to install the perimeter fence. Unfortunately, when Matthew Moore from Saxmoor Fencing arrived on Monday the 18th of July, the maize fields surrounding the site hadn't been harvested yet. This created a problem as the new fence will be placed in a radius of approximately 140 meters around the new antenna. We have been contracted to do the perimeter fence around the mast or centre. The fencing won't be installed today, the site is not ready, it's not cleared properly. For us to commence work here, we'd need the, the site fully cleared. A lot of the perimeter at the moment is within the milli field, so it would have to be graded so we can see a proper fence line. We'd have to have a full fence line before we can commence with work. We're looking at probably about a week before installation. The area has subsequently been cleared, and the staff from Saxmo Fencing returned to site on the 2nd of August to start the over kilometer long fence installation. We're looking at plus minus 1.2 kilometers of fencing. The, the fence we're doing is an electric fencing and it is about two meters high. It, it consists of, of electrical strands and obviously your main support post and then on the outside of that there'll be a mesh fence which is your perimeter fence which is, is basically put there so no one inadvertently touches it from the outside. You're looking at about 10,000 volts that will be running through the, through the fence. Electric fencing is very effective. The electric fencing has an outdoor alarm system so if any of the wires are cut on the electric fencing an alarm will trigger 
and also obviously the deterrent of getting shocked, you know, so it's a, basically two aspects of, of security on electric fans. A tractor load of backhoe, or simply known as a TLB, arrived on site on Tuesday and it made light work of demolishing the old ATU buildings. Apart from the buildings, a number of tree stumps and other debris had to be removed to make way for the new antenna's radial system. I suppose you could say we're burying the past and starting anew. This site has a rich history and it goes all the way back to the early 1940s. In 1943, it had two 5 kilowatt transmitters installed but it only went into service in 1946 due to lack of staff. Then, in 1946, this transmitting station was officially inaugurated, although regular transmissions were delayed owing to a lack of spare parts. The following year, in 1947, two 5 kilowatt medium wave transmitters were brought into service. Then, two years later, in 1949, an experimental 400 watt short wave transmitter went on air using a directional antenna to southwest Africa, or now known as Namibia. In 1950, Springbuck Radio, the SABC's first commercial service and probably its most popular bilingual commercial service, was inaugurated and transmitted on medium wave from the site on 5 kilowatts and short wave on 5 kilowatts. Good morning, everybody. The time is a quarter to seven, and this is Springbok Radio, the commercial service of the SABC, calling from Johannesburg on your wavelengths of brighter broadcasting from now until 11 o'clock tonight. May we wish you all a day of pleasant and entertaining programs from Springbok Radio. General Assistance Department, number one speaking. Hello, this is number two. Pick it out. Excuse me. Springbok Radio invites you to lean back, put your feet up, and spend the next half hour with the Brolly Briefcase and Bowler Brigade. The beds of the ministry. They prowl the empty streets at night, waiting in fast cars, on foot, living with crime and violence. These men are on duty 24 hours out of every 24. They face dangers at every turn, expecting nothing less. They protect the people of South Africa. These are the men of squad cars. And so, this is it. The last seconds of the station that was born 35 years ago, which began life as a revenue earner, quickly became a household friend and maintained both those attributes from beginning to end. From 1978 onwards, a number of stations have also transmitted on frequencies like 1287 kHz and 1404 kHz. It seems like we've come to the end of phase one of the Welgedacht site rehabilitation. So what's next? Well, the existing transmitter room needs to be refurbished and the existing transmitters in the transmitter room will most likely be removed to make space for the new 702 kHz and 540 kHz transmitters. The antenna foundation as well as the guy wire anchor foundations need to be sunk and set. The new antenna is in the process of being fabricated and it will be transported to site in 6 meter sections. But more about the new antenna in a later episode. Remember you can subscribe to my YouTube channel Gavin Buckle. You can follow me on Facebook, it is at Gavin Buckle Live, and I'm on Twitter at Gavin Buckle. So, perhaps it's in your hands, perhaps it's in your pocket, perhaps it's on your computer or inside your car. Whatever medium you use, it's still radio.